Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Breaking the Ceiling. Today, I have the privilege of interviewing one of my old friends. She is the first and only master of wine in India. She runs Soho Wine Consultants. She has a wine academy. She runs a chain of retail stores called Wine to Wine. She imports wine, and her, I think her life is filled with wine. Uh, I'm talking about none other than Sonal Holland. Hey, Sonal, welcome to Breaking the Ceiling. How wonderful to be here. Thank you. Uh, uh, Sonal, so uh, before we dive into wine, of course, uh, I would love to hear about your story before your wine out there. So before I got into the field of wines, I used to be working for a NASDAQ listed Fortune 500 company. I was the director of sales for that company and I joined them when I was 27 and I did a whole host of other things before that. But without dwelling more into that, this was the last stint before I kind of reinvented myself. Uh, and at the age of 27, Ashwin, my dream was to have a corner office. I wanted to be the CEO of the company. Uh, I was already in a senior role. I had opportunities opportunities to travel overseas uh, and it was a fairly rewarding job and I was well on my path to to assuming the, you know or fulfilling the dream that I was seeing but what happened was in the five years that transpired thereafter by the time I had turned 32 or, or 33 years old I had completely changed my mind I didn't I didn't want to be in this industry anymore uh, and I just felt the need to reinvent myself because I felt I wanted to be in an industry that made better utilization of my skill sets or it kind of allowed me the opportunity to to harness my talent in a way that the current job did not and uh, I just felt this urge to reinvent myself and sort of walk down a path that hadn't been walked before by anybody else and so I looked at a lot of industries around me uh, and I thought what could I do what what else you know but uh, thankfully over a glass of wine um, it it occurred to me and my husband who you know uh, who's British so he's also you know well exposed to the culture of wine from where he comes from we, we looked at the wine industry here in India and we thought okay here's an industry that's really really nascent there's a handful of producers producing wines there are a few imported wines coming into the country there's a growing interest on in wine among consumers but there are no qualified wine professionals who are doing the job of educating communicating advocating consulting about wines and if i look to the west this is a very serious career it's a very serious profession and there are some people who are right at the top in terms of being masters of wine which is the top accolade in the wine world the most respected title the world over and uh, we thought India doesn't have a master of wine in fact forget master of wine India doesn't have any qualified wine professionals all we have is a few wine snobs mm -hmm. who've read a couple of books on wine or drink very expensive wine and sort of flaunt their knowledge around and we thought okay why can't I be this person then so right at the outset uh, you know, I sort of made the resolution that I would strive to be India's first master of wine, but of course not knowing that this was what lay ahead of me was a 10 year long journey oh, wow. of investing and studying and traveling and all sorts of crazy things. But, uh, but that's really just how it happened over a glass of wine. I saw a strategic opportunity. I took a, a futuristic view on where this industry could be in, in years to come. And I made that strategic move in my career with a lot of conviction. And I think uh, the word that you use, reinventing yourself, is one of the hardest things people can do. It, it requires tremendous courage. It requires tremendous awareness of yourself, right? I mean, saying that, hey, this life, which is pretty good, is not how I see myself. And I want to go on this other path, which is unknown. I think that's a very brave step and bravo. I think you've come a long way and you've done fantastic things. Thank you. But if I can be totally dead honest, you know, life always looks so beautiful in hindsight. It's wonderful now to look back and say, yeah, I did that. But uh, it, with, with all honesty, back then when I was just looking to do it, I was just bored of, uh, you know, the politics, the bureaucracy that typically exists in a corporate environment. And sometimes I feel like when we're in these corporate jobs, you know, it's like we're not in the front seat. We're not, con we're not in control of our own uh, work-life balance or what is it that we strive or desire to do. Uh, life's sort of driving us. And that's how I was feeling. And I wanted to take back that control. I wanted to do something that allowed me to do what I wanted to do in my job 
but not let the job dictate that to me. So whilst it all looks wonderful in hindsight, back then I feel I was driven by a need to, for a change. And uh, uh, I did it with a certain naivety, I would say. I, would, I did it with a certain, you know, I didn't know exactly what I was getting into or what lay ahead. But, uh, but I guess I, I was ready for what, you know, yes, there was a certain element of risk, risk I took and thank God for that. Uh, but not so well planned, you know, not so knowing, oh, I know exactly what steps to take and this is how it's going to pan out. No, you just, you know, you, you go with a, a, a voice that sort of go, comes from within you and you, you take a call, you know, you, you go with some sense of conviction. And I've always been the kind, even as a teenager, you know, I always learned to sort of dive at the deep end of the ocean and learn how to swim. So I guess in this case as well, I, I did something similar. So uh, at Equinox, we always say we jump off a cliff and we build the aircraft on the way down. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. so what was the... What, what is the story behind the name? So I, I want, you, you have multiple ventures, right? So tell me about Soho Wine Concept. What is, what is the story name? So, you know, thinking of a name is always so difficult, right? But it's always the starting point. And I was looking for a name for the company and I obviously considered many options. But then I wanted something that, that I would relate to as well, had a little bit of me in it uh, and uh, looked for a number of names. But uh, Soho, as the whole, rest of the world knows of it, is, is, is a town, you know, that exists or an area that exists in, in the UK and New York and everywhere. Uh, but it's also something that's urban, that's trendy, that's edgy, that's youthful, it's a bit on the wild side. And I felt all of these qualities sort of resonated with me. But coincidentally, Soho also happens to be the first two uh, acronyms or the letters of my name, Sonal Holland. So I thought, okay, let me just take Soho, because that then becomes an extension of me and start a company in that name. And all the adjectives you named are exactly what I would use to describe you. So <laughs> but not so, thank you, Ashur, but not so much me, God, hopefully not edgy, but you know what I mean? But I thought wine is all these things, right? Like wine is new to the country. Wine is about uh, keeping people young at heart. It's urban. It's an urban phenomena. It's it's very lifestyle related. So I thought Soho as a word sort of resonates with wines really well, or the culture of wine really well, and so it all kind of came together. That is awesome. Uh, I love the play on wine to wine. That was that was fantastic. So when you started, what were a few of the challenges that you? There were lots of challenges. Um, one, uh, there was no, firstly I needed to study about wines and I'm, I'm glad that I didn't choose any shortcuts there. You know, I decided to build my career on a, on a bed of solid credentials, you know, credibility and respect were, to me was always paramount. So I decided to sort of invest uh, in myself from a studying point of view and there was no means of studying back about wine in India. So I had to sort of go to London and, and stay there for extended periods of time. And this was also the time when, as I mentioned, I was married, but you know, I had a little baby at the time then. And so I had to stay away from home. And the mother's guilt, God, it's so real because I had to spend so much time away from home. I missed a couple of my daughter's birthdays. Because don't forget, Ashwin, I studied up to the Master of Wine level. And before I even got on the Master of Wine program, there was a hell of a lot of studies I did. Prior to that, lots of qualifications that I started to bag one after the other. So I studied for 10 continuous years. So life was sort of running parallel. And then of course, it wasn't just about being a student. I had to start practicing some of this back home. So I started Sonal Holland Wine Academy, which was uh, you know, built with the vision of providing world-class wine education to hospitality professionals and enthusiasts back home. Because I realized if this industry was to grow and if more people were to study about wines, not everybody was going to just pack their bags like me, take off to London, stay away from home, it's not practical. So I started the academy with that vision. We started doing a lot of events. So it was, it was a combination of managing work, managing home uh, and the new life that, you know, the new phase in my life and also managing my studies because I wasn't letting go still the dream of wanting to be India's first master of wine. And so I felt there were moments when all these three things were kind of catching up on me, you know, parallelly, and there was always something to worry about. So, um, but yeah, and there were moments, there were moments when I questioned it all. And I, there were moments when I asked myself, you know, why am I doing this? Who's putting a gun to my head? No one's questioning me. I don't have to submit a report card to anybody. Uh, no one's doing my appraisals anymore. So why am I doing this? So, um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm so glad I, it, at some point it became a bit of an obsession and I realized this was an industry that was, 
it was totally up my alley. I was enjoying what I was doing. I was thriving on it and uh, it kept me going. And of course, I had a tremendous support system. You know, my husband, my family, they were all there for me. Uh, there were days when I would want to quit and my husband would say, stop making excuses, you know, get on with it and, you know, so on. So I'm so grateful and thankful for that. But also challenges, practical challenges, Ashwin, like there's a complete lack of good wines available in our country, even today. And you can imagine how bad that was back in the time when I was on this journey. But, uh, you know, just lack of good wines to taste, to be able to even do events with, um, a lack of know-how, a lack of appreciation. You know, I had relatives who would ask me, what is it that you do? And I would explain this and I knew it was going 30,000 feet above their, you know, heads and they were like, thinking, looking at me and thinking, okay, you're just drinking, right? Like you're just waking up at eight o'clock in the morning and drinking through the day. So no one could get it. So there was a lack of appreciation, a lack of understanding, all of these challenges, which were cultural, practical, you know, all of these in nature. But uh, like I said, I just wanted to so do it. How does work-life balance figure into all of this? It never does. I have to keep hustling and you have to keep reminding yourself, you know, there are days uh, when work gets so, so busy that I'm almost guilty of neglecting family and family time uh, till I have to kind of one fine evening remind myself, you know what, uh, I haven't spent good time, quality time with my daughter. So then the coming weekend, I have to consciously make the time. I think for a lot of us women, you know, uh, Ashwin, and again, I'm not making this a gender biased conversation, but for a lot of us women, we really have to try and do it all. Um, and there is no compromise. So we often have to step back and remind ourselves itself um, that uh, I'm, I'm lacking in this area. And there are, there are women and people in general who I know who would allow themselves to slacken in certain areas of their life forever. Like I know women who, who are not very house proud and so generally have very mismanaged or cluttered homes. But I'm not like that. I'm very house proud and I'm the kind who wants it all. I'm the kind who I find almost drive my own self to some level of craziness because I want to have the cake and eat it too. So I want every aspect and every dimension of my life uh, to be uh, where I want it to be, you know, somewhere that makes me feel proud. And so, yeah, it's a constant hustle. It's a constant struggle, but I'm just happy that uh, I, I strive for it because if you don't strive, you don't get right. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, tell me one of the proud moments you've had as a wine professional. So uh, I would say it all it all started when my 10 year long dream of wanting to be India's first master of wine eventually came true. Um, it was Ganpati day and we were in the middle of a Ganpati puja and I had a call from the Institute of Masters of Wine uh, in September of 2016 to tell me that uh, the uh, I've passed the exams and my final thesis paper has also been accepted and graded and I've passed and I'm now officially a master of wine. And uh, even now when I'm saying it, I'm getting goosebumps because I can never forget that moment, you know, because you, when you wait too long for a dream to come true and it finally happens, you actually don't have a reaction. I was stupid enough to ask, like, are you serious? Like I was, you know, like I thought it was a spam call or something or someone trying to pull a fast one on me. Uh, but then, of course, what followed were lots of tears of joy and, you know, and what was great is because it was gun day my entire family was around me my parents were with me my husband and daughter of course my sister everybody who mattered and everybody who'd supported me on this journey everybody who'd walked this journey with me you know through all the trials and tribulations were right there right around me when the news came out so I was just so grateful and so uh, it was such an amazing moment but my greatest compliment and my greatest proudest moment came when my daughter at the time I remember she was seven years old and she was just about learning mathematics in school and everyone was saying you're India's first master of wine and all and she walked over to me and she said mommy are you really India's only master of wine because that makes you one in a billion oh. huh? and that was just such a I looked at her and I said this is my greatest reward all these years I kept thinking is she gonna forget I'm her mother am I you know am I ever gonna make it as a mother you know what am I doing neglecting my it all kind of dissolved and it all suddenly became so well worth it and to me that still remains my greatest compliment yet I think that would be the greatest if I ever get that compliment I'll be in tears I, I almost, but I'm trying not to for the camera. Uh, so tell me about uh, some of the upcoming projects, something new, something that you're working on. Yeah. Something that may not be too public yet, but if you yeah. can share something. 
So the most exciting thing about being a wine entrepreneur in our country is that everything is like a blank canvas. There are hardly any initiatives. There's hardly anything being done. So there's a lot to be done to grow the culture. And I wake up every morning and every month with a new idea. And I sit with the team and I say, what else can we do? But as, as you correctly introduced me uh, you know, right in the beginning, you said we already have a, an academy. We were heavily into classroom trainings. And that entire business is now going digital. So I think the next few years, we'll see us offering a lot of online virtual classes and by the way I must say I'm also very excited about what metaverse mm -hmm. and the whole you know the future offers in in that space uh, so we kind of you know offering a whole lot of those education courses we're doing lots and lots of consulting work for international companies who you know the interest in India is growing as a market so I'm excited about that because more and more wines want to come into India and we are right at the forefront with advising them helping them with the route to market strategy and consulting and so on so very excited about that uh, we see that the culture of wine is growing because you know wine is the most popular beverage of choice today and we're exposed to wine so much through you know on Netflix and our movies and in, in everywhere we go um, so lots of events happening uh, so more and more of that but we're opening more wine shops that's the bit I'm most excited about as well I'm in the process of opening a new uh, flagship store in Mumbai I can't tell you very much because then you know I, I'm often told I should uh, do and then speak right rather than speak and you know and then not do or not end up doing so uh, but yeah and imports you know imports is growing we want to import more wines into India because ultimately all I want is to grow the positive culture of wine in our country and help people see and experience the fascinating world of wines and see through my eyes the way I see it that is I think a fantastic vision uh, I must agree with you the amount of Wine being consumed, I think, in India is almost doubled in the last three to four years from what I studied last. Yes. Uh, today, if you go to a party, earlier you would see beers and whiskies. Today, you would see beers, whiskies, wines. Yes. It's so every third glass is a wine. Yes. And I can reflect on my own uh, bar. Earlier, I'm more of a whiskey and beer kind of a person. I think one third of my alcohol collection now is wines. Right, so uh, I'm, I'm seeing that trend yeah. and people are uh, you know, experiencing wine in different ways. Yes. I'm seeing a lot of clubs being formed. Exactly. Uh, I would, I've been hearing about a legendary wine club and I've still not gotten an invite so I'm really angry. But I'm, go I'm going to sneak myself into one of those. Yes, ones. but you know wine is such a convivial drink. It, it, it induces conversations, it builds friendship. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, of course it's a drink that you can enjoy with food which you know gives it a big boost you know and earlier I used to see Ashwin in our country it was a you know men used to drink whiskey and women would hide their drinks spike their drinks as we say you know with some coca-cola or some sprite and stand in a corner and maybe talk about the children and the maids and the men would be sitting and enjoying whiskeys on their own I feel that wine is kind of bringing the man and the woman together because increasingly I find you know people saying or women saying rather that my my husband encourages me to enjoy a glass of wine with him every evening and so both are finding company in each other in a way so I like to tease you know I like to say you know wine and in directly or indirectly is building rebuilding marriages uh, and today if you look at our Bollywood films you know I touched upon that but back in the day they would never show a lead actor you know like the heroine of the film consuming alcohol that was a role only for the vamps, right? Who would you know drink and seduce? So, uh, but today, if you see any any Bollywood movie, they pick up Padukone, Priyanka Chopra, anybody in the lead lead role, they are not only drinking wine from the glass, they're openly even tossing wine off the bottle, which is something I wouldn't advocate. But the fact is, it shows that wine is seen as a softer beverage. It has a softer image. It is considered more elegant, and in many ways, maybe not considered alcohol at all. You know, except the government doesn't see it like that, unfortunately. <laughs> I wish they would. But, uh, but you know what I mean? It has a much softer image. Uh, it's, it's considered by far the most civilized, more civilized drink to be seen so consuming. I think it's a social drink. It's something you can literally have in a bedroom while watching something. So again, uh, yes. I remember a few years ago, earlier we swapped, it's always been whiskey in the living room. Yes. But now it's become wine and maybe a cheese platter in the bedroom while watching yes. Netflix. And it's something you can do before during and, and after. after. 
So I think wine is a big part of the chill in Netflix and chill. So yes. I'm, I'm seeing wine becoming a big part of that. Yes. So. God knows how much Netflix and Amazon Prime we watched during the last two years of the pandemic. And imagine all those Indians, uh, all of us Indians, who've been constantly exposed to the imagery of wine on our screens. And I think that has also further boosted, you know, the, the popularity of wine in India. And uh, I think the fact that having a glass of red wine a day is healthy for you, that, I don't know how true it is, but I would like to call it true because I have a glass of red wine every day. And if somebody says, when you're drinking every day, I'm like, yeah, it's healthy for the heart. <laughs> so it, it, it kind you of look, You look in perfectly great shape, so we'll just follow you then. Let's make it. We'll just yeah. follow your footsteps then. So uh, tell me about uh, a thing that you would want yourself to have known when you were 20. Something that now you can be like, I should have done this when I was I wasted a lot of time in my 20s, <laughs> but wasted a lot of time having fun. So I shouldn't regret that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, you know, I would just say uh, to my 20 year old self that, uh, gosh, firstly, I would tell myself, dumb this guy because you're going to end up with somebody really amazing who's going to support you, invest in you and your dreams and uh, you're going to have an amazing future. That's one thing I would say. Uh, and definitely somebody who would, um, I think I lacked confidence back then in my growing year. You know, those were gawky years. You were sort of unsure about yourself. So I would tell myself to remind myself to have more faith in myself, have more confidence in my own abilities. Mm -hmm. Today I find myself in a much stronger position on that front, uh, so I would definitely say that. And, and overall I would just say to myself, don't you worry girl, because you're going to kick the ball out of the park in years to come, so enjoy it, yes. enjoy, you know, enjoy the journey. Absolutely, I, I think it's all about enjoying the journey, right? And at any point in time, if you don't seem to enjoy the journey, yes. maybe it's time to reinvent yourself, revisit what yes. you're doing, why you're doing it. Right? Yes. So tell me about a superpower that you have that could be a reason you're an amazing person or you're an amazing entrepreneur. I know I'm asking you to toot your own horn, but I would love to know a superpower that you have. Gosh, you really should. Okay then. Well, when you said tell me a superpower, I was going to say I can finish a bottle of wine in less than less than 20 minutes. But, or, or, or as a super taster, for example, I can taste a wine and I can tell you how much it probably costs, where it's from, what vintage it's from, you know, or, or which grape variety it's made from, how it's been made. Because that's what we do, right? As masters of wine, we passed a lot of... Uh, blind tasting exams where we're required to identify what the wine is. But as an entrepreneur, I would say my single greatest uh, uh, skill or power would be that I actually believe I'm very, very empathetic. I'm very high on empathy. Uh, if somebody tells me a problem, uh, before I know it, it's my problem. And uh, I'm not sure that's, uh, <laughs> you know, I, sometimes I'm kicking myself for sort of pulling all these problems on my own head. But I, I have, I, I'd like to believe as, a, as, a, as somebody who leads the team, I, I show great empathy. I try to be understanding. And I think it's important as female entrepreneurs to have that because a lot of my own colleagues are females. So I think that would be one thing. Uh, so I think empathy is extremely important because if, you want, if you're going to lead people mm -hmm. and not manage people, Empathy is a cornerstone of leadership. Yeah. So I think if that's but on the I'm opposite, to negate that, I'm incredibly impatient. <laughs> <laughs> so all the empathy in the world on one I side. But I'm like, like I, but day. yes, like I totally understand your problem, but please, can we have this at my desk tomorrow morning at nine? But yeah, sorry. sorry. But you know what I mean? I'm incredibly impatient. I just like want everything done as of day before yesterday. But uh, empathy and so I've been studying uh, leaders, I've been studying uh, you know, great people in the world and I've seen three things that make them great. The first is empathy, second is tenacity or grit, like not giving up in spite of all kinds of failures and I think third is having a vision of the world and then doing everything you can to get there and even if nobody else sees it, only if you see it but you have the tenacity and you have the grit to go behind it, you have the passion to kind of follow it. If you have these three things, I think you'll be a fantastic leader and you achieve whatever you set your mind to. I have actually changed the world. I totally love it that. I love grit. I love grit. I love the the concept of grit. Um, yeah. It's, I love it. It's, it's everything. It's difficult. Yeah. No, it's just, you know, just being able to stick your teeth in and 
have this unrelenting attitude, you know, just not willing to let go till you can have it, mm -hmm. uh, I think is an incredible quality to have because life throws so many reasons for you to give up all the time, you know. Um, if you just keep hiding behind excuses and you take the first opportunity to dive out or duck out, mm -hmm. Uh, you can never move forward. So I think grit, grit is wonderful. So grit is something uh, I've had for a long time. Empathy is something I developed in my late 20s. And vision is something that I have had for a long time. So my vision has been to make water, food and air safer in India. Nice. And everything I'm doing is kind of working towards that. But when people see that and they buy into it, then it's no longer a job. They are, in the, they are part of the same journey, they are part of the same vision. That could be my teammates, that could be our customers. And customers like that about me and they like that about economics. Because they know that, hey, when I'm working with you, you will go above and beyond to make sure that we are on the right path and not because of service or it's money or whatever. Because you believe in the same thing we believe in. So that, that's helped us a lot. And when we started communicating this to other people, right. we started getting more like-minded people. Excellent. We've done something very uh, interesting at Equinox in the last one year. We started firing customers. Mm. Customers would not so important. With yeah. Our line of uh, with our vision. Like yes. People would call us and say change the report. Yeah. An intern is allowed to find that client if that's what the customer of course. is asking. They're like, please take your money. No come. No. Yes. But no. So, so important. It's absolutely. I important. agree. Trust and ethics. Ethics and integrity is everything, right? It's it's at the center of of um, what you do. It's almost like a uh, it's an unsaid thing. It's a given. One shouldn't even have to discuss it at the table. So, um, but you'll be very surprised how often, how often it comes it, in the way. It comes, and it comes up. up. Often you're tempted by people like, please do a deal that you more into this. But I think just as a company, and I think as people, as just the team, yes. we believe in the same thing. So we believe that hey, we shouldn't be paying people under the table like for of government course. things. Of course, we shouldn't be taking money from government things. Of course, and, but. The right people appreciate it and then they stick with you through thick and thin. So I think that is really And you know something, I was reading another book uh, about how to build your personal brand. And uh, uh, the author says very powerfully there, something I didn't expect. He said, at the core of building a personal brand is integrity. And uh, you know, if you have integrity and it, it, it reflects in everything you do, say, and every point of contact, whether it's a proposal or a template or an email or a social media post or your conversations or your dealings or whatever it might be, contracts, if there is integrity right at the center or fulcrum of everything you do, over a period of time, you'll build an ecosystem, a community of customers and people who rely on you and they see you as a person they can go to and, and trust and that's how you build a very powerful brand for yourself and for your business. And I love that thought because ordinarily if somebody asked me, how do you build a personal brand in 2022? I wouldn't say integrity. I mean, of course, of course. integrity is important, but I wouldn't, I, you know, I, I think like how do you do great PR, for example, or other things, right? But uh, um, I thought that was so well explained in that book. Um, I'll send you the book over to read. Absolutely. It's so amazing. amazing. One of my mentors, uh, she's an influencer um, on Instagram and many other places. So she told me that the right way of building a personal brand, which is a great personal brand, she's like with authenticity and integrity. She's like who you are off camera Yeah. is the person you need to be on camera, on social media. So it's no longer pressurized, it's no longer fake that oh, yeah. for the camera. Yeah, you're not just smiling, smiling right? for the sake of smiling. So, and because I was asking her, like, how do you do this? Like, how do you do these reels and videos and your entire life is up for showcase? So she's like, none of it is fake. I'm just putting what I'm doing. I'm on the go and I'm That's filming it. I'm just sharing with people and people like the journey. So social media and PR and all are nothing but other people who appreciate, are probably entertained, inspired Correct. by the journey or not. Correct. And that's the reason I started this breaking the scene. It was to inspire people by listening to people like you who've done things differently, who've mm -hmm. broken stereotypes, who've uh, reinvented themselves to come out stronger, to come out more powerful. And yeah. if that is not a source of inspiration, I don't know what is. What is, right? yeah. No, that's, that's an incredible thought. So 
Tell me about mentorships. Now, in my life, mentors have always played a very important role. Mm. Do you have any mentors in your personal life, in your professional life? Are you a mentor to somebody else? So, mentorship works both ways, right? How, who mentored me and what am I doing as a mentor today in the role that, you know, in a big or small way, whichever way I can. Uh, unfortunately, I have to say, I didn't end up with many mentors at the workplace. My workplace was always straddling with a, with a lot of, you know, politics and bureaucracy around it. And somehow there was always this, uh, I don't know, I had a lot of sexism at play at work and so on. So not very much to pay credit there. But I think my biggest mentors came in the, in, in, in the blessing of a father and my husband. They've both shaped, you know, I would say my father to act upon our ideas because I believe ideas are like molecules floating in the air and they hit people and then the idea doesn't belong to the one who gets it first, the idea belongs to the one who acts upon it first. Uh, I'd also like to encourage young people to believe in themselves. I know it sounds very cliched, but I think a lot of us young people don't, you know, we just don't believe in ourselves, really. Um, and uh, I loved your thoughts about authenticity and integrity and putting ourselves out there. It's important we understand what our real strength is. So if your strength is that you have an ability to speak fluently and communicate lucidly and win people's hearts, then be in a line of profession that gives you the platform to be able to do that. You know, a lot of us, a lot of us youngsters, they keep thinking about which industry they should be in. And I say to them, don't worry about the industry. Think about the skill set that you have. Then that skill can be applied to several other industries. It doesn't matter. You might end up in any industry of, of you know, different permutations. So. Um, so in short, I would say I would encourage all the young people out there to go for it, step out, own their dreams and achieve incredible things. That is fantastic and what a lovely advice uh, to end the show on. Um, so thank you so much for taking out the time. I know you are busy. I know you have another interview to go to. I know that as well. And thank you so much for taking out the time and coming here and you know, uh, giving, sharing so much with me, sharing so much with our audience. Uh, thank, you. thank you. I'm just really excited because this just this evening, we're getting awarded, the Sonal Holland Wine Academy is being awarded at an award ceremony for, um, for just building a great digital platform for wine education that's in the country. So that's what's keeping me busy and I have a little speech to make prior to that. So that's on my mind, but I'm very excited about this. Thank but thank you. So you. Much and congratulations. Also. Thank you so much. So guys, so guys, that was Sonal Holland. She's an amazing person. I know her on camera, I know her off camera, and she's an absolute pleasure to be with. Uh, she not only knows her wine, she knows her people, she knows how to manage people, how to treat people, right? And that's the reason she has an amazing team and they are going by leaps and bounds and I wish them the very best. And uh, stay tuned for the next episode, which will be coming in a week from now. Thank you and have a great day.